Welcome to Carlton's Math Corner. Today, we're going to continue our study of solving equations with variables on both sides. So, in order to begin, please make sure you have your vocab packet, uh, your math journal, as well as something to write with. Okay, so our target today is I can solve multi-step equations with fractions. So we're going to have variables on both sides, and we're going to have fractions within these equations. So we're adding, we're, we keep adding another step. And so what I want you to do is first look at this problem. Okay, so I, oh, I'm going to take one, kind of one step at a time. Okay, so looking at this problem, here's the original problem up here. What do you notice? How do they get from here? And what are they doing here? Okay, and then how do they get down to 24V plus 45 equals 40V? What's going on? How do I start with fractions and end up with whole numbers? or integers, I should say. What is going on? Well, what I notice, I notice that the denominators, five, four, and three, their least common multiple or their common you know, denominator is 60. And so LCM, remember, least common multiple, is 60 amongst them. And so I want you to see what is happening to get down to 24. Because I notice that 60 I, is the same as 60 over 1. So 60 really is a numerator. And I can put any number over 1 because 1 I can, you know, I can divide any number by 1 and still get the same answer. So 60 over 1 times, because it's next to parentheses, 2 over 5. And then there's a V here, plus 3 fourths, and these are all in parentheses. Now the reason why they're in parentheses is because I have found a, a least common multiple. And so we're going to take that least common multiple and multiply it by each of these fractions, okay? And so one way to show multiplication is by putting parentheses around it to, and then putting 60 on the outside. Now, so I'm first going to take 60 times 2 fifths. So 60, remember, is a numerator. So I'm going to do 60 times 2. 60 times 2 is 120. And then we have 1 times 5 is 5. So 120 over 5. And that's another way to write a fraction is with a slash. So 120 is my numerator. 5 is my denominator. Well, I know that I can simplify that because 120 divided by 5 is 24. And another way that I could have done that it, instead of having such big numbers, I actually could simplify them right away. And we learned this in a previous video on multiplying fractions. So I can actually cross off the 60 and the 5, and I could simplify them because 5 does go into 60. It goes in there 12 times, so I can write down 12 on top of the 60, and then... 5 divided by 5 is just 1. So basically, I took this fraction, 60 over 5, and I simplified it to 12 over 1. Then I can just multiply straight across, and I have smaller numbers. 12 times 2 is 24, and 1 times 1 is just 1. So my answer is 24. So finding a common, at least common multiple, helped me simplify this fraction down to 24 V okay now how about over here uh, let's 3 fourths times 60 over 
one. And I can do the same thing. I can simplify right away. So I know that four and 60 can be simplified and it simplifies down to 15 over one. So I can multiply three times 15 is 45 and one times one is one. So it went down to 45. Then lastly, on the other side, we gotta multiply everything by 60. If we find a least common multiple, we're multiplying everything by 60. And the reason why we're doing this is because who, no one wants to work with fractions when we're solving equations. Fractions really make it quite difficult. It is much easier to solve an equation with a whole number or an, an integer um, because it's easier to mul you know, multiply, divide, add, subtract. Fractions, if we leave them the way they are, then you're going to be adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing fractions throughout the whole equation. And so this is one way to just get rid of them so then the equation is easier to solve in the end. So I just turned them into a whole number. So this is what we have left. This work that we did, so multiplying this by 60, got it down, or changed it to 24, and we still keep the V. Then 3 fourths times 60, we got 45. And then over on the right side of the equation, we did 2 thirds times 60. And it changed it to 40 and we still got to keep the V. Now, this is the equation that we have. We have 24 V plus 45 equals 40 V. And the wonderful thing about it is that now we can move the variable over on one side. I can take 24 and move it over to the other side uh, to be with the 40 V. And the way to do that, remember, is do the opposite. If it's positive, then we put minus 24v. So 40 minus 24 is 16. 45 still stay the same. And the last step was try to get rid of that 16. We're trying to get v by itself. So 16 times v, the inverse of that is divide by 16. So 45 divided by 16 is 2.8125. And I can actually check this answer if I put in 2.8125. So I would put it in the calculator, so 2.8125. If I put it in for V on the left side, and let's look at the original problem. So I'll go back up. Okay, so here's the original problem. So picture this number as the numerator, okay, because I can put a 1 under it and it wouldn't change. So I'm going to take this times two, times two, and then divided by, that's what that symbol means, divided by five, plus, I know three fourths is 0.75, and if I didn't know that, I could do three divided by four on my calculator, and I get 0.75, and here's what I get on the left side, 1.875, okay? And I'm going to check and see if it's the same as the right side. So 2 times 2.8125, oops, 5, times 2, divided by 3. And I get the same answer. So that means that this answer is correct. It, it makes it so that both sides are equal in this equation. Okay, so what we did is we found the least common multiple of the denominators. Then we multiplied each term by that least common multiple. So we went through and multiplied by 60. 
So we took 2 fifths and multiplied by 60, 3 fourths times 60, and then 2 thirds times 60. And we came up with these integers, 24, 45, and 50, and rewrote our equation, including the variables. Step number three, we got the variable to one side. We used the inverse operation. Okay, so in this case, the opposite of addition was subtraction, so we use subtraction. And then the last thing was we solved for the variable by multiplying or dividing, and in our case, we divided. And so we got 2.8125. 2 so what I would like for you to do is I want you to try these problems, okay? These are the three. Um, if you see um if you see a whole number that's not a fraction you still can multiply that by a common denominator so since this number number two has only one fraction i can multiply everything by just this denominator because that's going to be the common denominator because that's the only fraction i have there's nothing else that i can compare it to so I can multiply everything by two if I wanted to. So keep that in mind, whole numbers or integers, we can multiply them also by whatever the least common multiple is. Okay, so please try these and then come with any questions that you may have tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining me at Carlton's Math Corner and I look forward to meeting with you again.